And back out of here live, although Crandon and Hollower beaches are open, rescue crews. Safe. Day. Painful. One, two, three, four, five, four, three. So apparently it's coming back. Test one, two, three, four, five. El Jefe. Mike, check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that brought people out here. This is CBS 4 News at 7. Tonight at 7, tracking Tropical Storm Gordon. The storm right now making its way into the Gulf of Mexico and toward the Panhandle. The outer bands of the storm dumped half a foot of rain across parts of South Florida, all while Tropical Storm warnings and a flood watch were in effect. Drivers in Homestead, one of the hardest hit areas, were forced to navigate flooded roadways today. Tropical Storm Gordon dampened most Labor Day weekend plans. And just take a look at this rough surf and the high risk of rip currents forced officials to close all the beaches in Miami Dade. County. Miami Beach completely empty as residents and tourists were told to stay away. And tonight we're mostly out of the woods. Some good news there. The weather has been gradually improving as Gordon moves farther away. Let's check in with our chief meteorologist Craig Setzer. And when can we finally say goodbye Gordon once and for all? I think by tomorrow afternoon, let's say we will be out of the influence of Gordon completely. It's back to steamy summertime weather, but still enough moisture around to support big thunderstorms, heavy thunderstorms with big downpours. Here's a satellite loop of Gordon through the day today in every image there uh, one minute apart so a very smooth looking image uh, the National Weather Service will move some of these very high resolution sat satellite sectors over areas of interest and today the area of interest of course was tropical storm Gordon there is Gordon right now the biggest thunderstorms on the west coast we are looking pretty good over here uh, through the evening hours nothing going on right now in Broward nothing in Miami Dade even to the southeast because the steering winds are from southeast to northwest really nothing going on just a few little showers over there near Andros Island. So 
going to be mostly quiet. A little bit later on this evening, though, I think we'll see some storms pop up and return to the area. Lower Keys, a few showers right now. Middle and Upper Keys looking good, but some bigger thunderstorms on to the south coming off of Cuba across the strait. So some passing storms possible. Now on to Gordon, and there you can see the center right in that general area there. For a time, it looked like it was trying to get a bit of an eye wall forming, but um, now just kind of a, a northern edge there to the overall circulation and still getting better organized and the heaviest weather right now on the east side of it affecting Fort Myers as well as the Naples area. Here's the computer models as we go through the night and that's the uh, fear is that a few more of these little thunderstorms will pop up and move across the area and while they may produce some brief downpours we've had so much rain and the ground is so saturated Miami-Dade and Broward that any additional rainfall could create some flooding so the flood watch uh, continues through at least the evening hours for South Florida. Latest advisory was at 5 o'clock. We'll get an update as of 8 p.m., but the latest forecast track is as of 5 p.m. Moving west-northwest at 17, 50-mile-an-hour winds there, and at that time was west-southwest of Naples. Future track gives it only about 24 hours before it reaches the coast. That's good because it doesn't have a lot of time to strengthen, but it has enough time to possibly become a Category 1 hurricane as it reaches the coast tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening. Then after that, it is a rainmaker that moves on to the north through parts of the deep south there. So folks there are watching it just in terms of the rainfall potential it could bring. In terms of wind and storm surge, highest winds and the storm surge are going to be right there along the northern Gulf Coast. Parts of Alabama and Mississippi, maybe even extreme eastern Louisiana and extreme western Florida panhandle as the storm moves north. As far as rainfall that we saw here, almost six inches of rain. Homestead five and a half and West Kendall, everybody else between two and three inches of rain. And wind gusts this morning were quite strong, but the winds right now they have died off very nicely, anywhere from about 5 to 13 miles. are going to stay a little bit breezy as we go through the evening and overnight tonight. So not too hot because we've rain cooled the air all day today. So the evening looking good if you have any barbecues planned for tonight. Later on tonight, some quick moving storms move in. Spotty Street flooding tomorrow. Return to summertime, steamy warm and some passing storms. Back to you. Greg, thanks a lot. Let's get right to our live team coverage of the storm. And CBS 4's Joe Murray is in Fort Lauderdale. And, but let's begin with CBS 4's Aurelia Ortega, who's in Hollover Beach. Aurelia. Elliot, we haven't seen any rain the whole time we've been here, but we can tell you that all beaches remain closed in Miami-Dade County, except for Crandon and Hollover Beach, where we are. But take a look at the ocean. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue says there's still a chance of rip currents, so swimmers should not go in the water. Beaches closed across Miami-Dade County this Labor Day because of a high risk of rip currents and bad weather conditions because of Tropical Storm Gordon. But a break from heavy winds and rain in the afternoon gave people the chance to enjoy what's left of the holiday. Much better than earlier before. Before it was raining bad, but now it's not bad. Now it's fine. From Kendall to Homestead and across South Florida, people felt the effects of the storm that formed off the Keys. Windy, rainy, heavy rain and a lot of water sitting everywhere. With all the rain that fell in Homestead, it nearly flooded out Southwest 328th Street near the Turnpike. The roads are really flooded, so you have to drive super slow, but it's really bad. In some areas, that water was more than a foot deep, making driving very difficult. Despite heavy rain, some found a big upside to this. Gordon wasn't a hurricane. So I'd rather get all the rain that I can now, so I don't have to deal about putting up the shutters. And back out here alive, although Crandon and Hollover beaches are open, rescue crews say swimmers should not go in the water. All county beaches are expected to open tomorrow. Live on Hollover Beach, Aralia Ortega, CBS 4 News at 7. Aralia, thanks. From one beach to another, Joan Murray picks up our coverage with more on how storm conditions affected residents in Broward County. Joan. Lauren, while there was a lot of rain, the beaches did remain open here in Broward, unlike Miami-Dade. Now, in the past two hours since rain has moved out, has brought people back here to the beach. We've actually seen people in the water, and people are trying to salvage what's left of this holiday that was mostly a washout. Heavy rain and gusty winds battered Broward most of Monday, upending holiday plans and soaking everyone and everything in sight. The tropical storm catching some by surprise. I just spur out of the moment. Just like boom, you know? Just happened out of nowhere. At times visibility was marginal. Driving was dicey. 
Marty Martinez cut short his extended holiday weekend to head back to Orlando. Oh, we weren't paying attention to the weather either, watching more football than weather. We're making the best of it. We're heading home, going, gotta go take it nice and slow. Slow is what it was like at restaurants and stores along the beach. The steady downpour is keeping people inside. Usually, everybody's barbecuing, everybody's uh, enjoying by the pool, but it's Florida, so you know you gotta take what you got. You know, so make the best of it. Canals were lowered to prepare for the storm and cut the risk of flooding. And while the beaches were mostly deserted, Richard Johansson couldn't pass up the chance of catching a few waves. I've been surfing for well over 50 years now at, at this beach. So this is this is my home. I got to give it a try. If it gets too uh, out of control, I'll just go home. Jim and Corinne Natalie just moved here from New York. And though their restaurant was mostly empty for lunch, they are seeing the upside of a tropical storm. I'll take this over snow any day of the week. I'm happy. I'm a happy man. This is the slowest I've seen it since we've been here. And you get the best seat in the house, right? Yes, yes we, we do. do. And uh, people are coming out to the restaurants tonight. It's getting a little bit busy here on A1A. And again, people still in the water. The beaches did remain open. Now, thankfully, we did not hear of any flooding throughout the county. In Fort Lauderdale, Joan Murray, CBS 4 News. Joan, thank you. Tropical Storm Gordon has left residents in both Miami-Dade and Broward counties without power. At last check, FPL is reporting there are 754 outages in Miami-Dade and 163 in Broward. And a reminder, you can track weather where you are at any time. Just download the CBS Miami weather app to your iPhone or your Android. You can find it in the iTunes Store or in the Google Play Store. All right, turning now to campaign 2018, nearly a week after the polls close, election workers are still counting thousands of mail-in ballots in a judicial race that's too close to call. CBS 4's Gary Nelson is at election headquarters in Lauder Hill with the story. Broward judicial candidate Richard Kaplan confronting election supervisor Brenda Snipes over thousands of mail-in and walk-in ballots not counted election night. Have those ballots been segregated? Why have I not been given access to them? Kaplan went to bed Tuesday night believing he'd beaten this man, incumbent Judge Michael Usan, by 740 votes. What he didn't know, a then reportedly 5,000 mail-in ballots not counted until Wednesday of ended the results, making Kaplan a loser by just over 300 ballots. Snipes blamed a last-minute crunch of absentees for the counting delay and today up the number by 4,000 votes. Well, if it's 9,000 ballots, we had the highest turnout we ever had in a primary. Miami-Dade also received thousands of absentees election day and the day before and had complete results early election night. Broward? And why were they not counted election night? Miami-Dade County? Uh, don't talk to me about Miami-Dade County. I don't deal in Miami-Dade County. I deal in Broward County. As canvassers began a hand recount of thousands of ballots rejected by the machines last week, Judge Usan observed without comment Kaplan still livid over not getting access to the votes counted after Election Day. What was up with those ballots? You know, we would like to make sure that they were reviewed by the canvassing board. Among other things, Kaplan's hired Ben Cuny, a very high profile attorney. Here there's a question, a legitimate question, what is the outcome of this race? Even if Kaplan loses what would be a razor-thin hand recount, he could still mount a court challenge citing alleged irregularities in the vote. Kaplan says if he is the loser in this, he might launch that court challenge or he might run for election to public office again, the supervisor of elections. In Lauder Hill, Gary Nelson, CBS 4 News at 7. Meanwhile, a machine recount today kept incumbent school board member Donna Korn in office. She got a fraction over 50% of the vote, avoiding a runoff with Ryan Petty, whose daughter was killed in the Stoneman Douglas mass shooting. Coming up, police release new details in the search for a two-year-old Pinellas County boy who's been missing for two days. Plus, new video of the dramatic rescue of four missing kayakers, including two children. CBS 4 News at 7. We'll be right back.
An Amber Alert has been issued for a two-year-old missing boy from Pinellas County. Jordan Beliveau was last seen with his mother yesterday morning in Largo near Tampa. He was wearing a blue shirt and blue gym shorts. The toddler may be with a 25-year-old man named Antoine, and the two may be in a white Toyota Camry. Here's a sketch released a short time ago. Police say his mother was offered a ride by someone who then struck the mother and took Jordan. The mother says she was unconscious for four hours and when she came to, the boy was gone. If you have any information, please call police. Caught on camera, two women and two children rescued after they got lost on a kayaking trip. The foursome were found in the middle of Mosquito Lagoon, west of Canaveral National Seashore. Because of the low tide, the FWC boat could not reach the kayakers in time. That's when a flight paramedic jumped 10 feet from a helicopter into the Mosquito Lagoon to help pull them about a quarter mile to the boat. All four victims are unharmed. President Trump spent his Labor Day making several calls about trade and other international issues. According to White House officials, the president fired off tweets over the weekend threatening to lock Canada out of a new North American free trade agreement. The government of Canada will not sign an agreement unless it's good for Canada and good for Canadians. We're going to continue talking until we reach a good deal. The three countries in North America, the economy is pretty integrated. And it's pretty hard to see how that would work without having Canada in the deal. In the same interview with Fox News, Richard Trumka, president of the AFL-CIO, went on to criticize some of the Trump administration's economic policies. That led to another presidential tweet saying, quote, Richard Trumka, the head of the AFL-CIO, represented his union poorly on television this weekend. The president told Congress he wants to sign a new NAFTA, even if it's with Mexico only, before the end of the year. And for the first time ever, the White House is claiming executive privilege and blocking access to more than 100,000 documents related to Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh during his time serving President George W. Bush. And this comes as the senator is preparing to begin Judge Kavanaugh's confirmation hearing. CBS 4's Mola Lenghi has a story from Capitol Hill. Democrats say President Trump is blocking access to documents they need to thoroughly vet Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. The records are from his time as a lawyer in President George W. Bush's administration. So help me God. Congratulations. Today. Senator Chuck Schumer called the decision a Friday night document massacre and added that it has all the makings of a cover-up. The White House responded saying it's turned over more than 400,000 documents, more than any other Supreme Court nominee. This isn't normal. It's not normal because we are not able to see 100,000 documents uh, that the archivist has just, mm -hmm. um, with because the administration has said we can't see them, they've ex right. exerted their executive power. Democrats will try to make the case that if confirmed, Kavanaugh will side with President Trump if he tries to shut down the Robert Mueller probe into possible collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. He's in writing has said you should throw out the special counsel statute. At least one Republican suggested that Kavanaugh could try to overturn Roe versus Wade, the landmark Supreme Court ruling which made abortion legal in every state. If there's a case before him that challenges Roe v. Wade, that he would listen to both sides of the story, apply a test to overturn precedent. There appears to be little Democrats can do to block Kavanaugh's confirmation. Republicans are very optimistic that he is going to be confirmed with the support of all the Republicans and probably a couple Democratic votes as well. Kavanaugh will take his seat on the Supreme Court if he gets 50 votes. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Now, Republicans don't need any Democrats to support Judge Kavanaugh if they all vote yes. However, a couple of Democrats who are up for re-election in red states could vote affirmative as well. Straight ahead, new recommendations from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Why parents are being urged to start thinking about the flu now. Stay connected 24-7 with the CBS local app and on cbsmiami.com.
In news across America, an officer in Georgia is injured in a shootout with suspects accused of shoplifting at a Walmart. According to police, when officers arrived to the scene, the suspects ran behind the store and opened fire on the officers. One of the suspects was shot and killed at the scene. Two others are in police custody. The injured officer was airlifted to a hospital in Atlanta, which is about 35 miles southeast of where the shooting took place. Chicago police say about 12 people were arrested in an anti-violence protest near O'Hare Airport. The organizers say the event was supposed to bring attention to the issues plaguing the city, including the lack of education, economic opportunities, and gun violence. Protesters plan to shut down the Kennedy Expressway and disrupt Labor Day traffic. 40 to 60 participated in the protest. The dozen or so arrested were cited for obstructing a roadway. Illinois State Police told protesters it was against the law to march on that expressway. And turning now to world news and the so-called sonic attacks making diplomats in Cuba and China sick, researchers are now saying that microwave weapons may be to blame. Investigators say they have torn apart buildings where diplomatic employees encountered the sounds but found no acoustic devices. They believe the concussion-like injuries were the result of microwaves beamed from a nearby location and that the sounds were merely a means of masking the micro microwave attacks. The Cuban government denies any involvement. If you look at the alleged events, uh, there have been reports that there are several people in a room, uh, uh, a room with thick walls and thick windows, and that only one was targeted. This, uh, I think, is a kind of weapon which uh, doesn't exist. I mean, th this kind of idea, uh, uh, it does not fit into the physics. Meanwhile, Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto delivered his sixth and final address to the nation today. In a recent message to Mexico, Peña Nieto said he leaves with the satisfaction that today's Mexico is, quote, undoubtedly better than the Mexico we had six years ago, end quote. Peña Nieto steps down in December when leftist Andres Manuel López Obrador will be sworn in as Mexico's next president. And on the CBS 4 News Health Alert, pediatricians around the country want parents to start thinking about the flu now. CBS 4's Laura Podesta has more on the new recommendations. It's still summer, but parents should already be preparing for the upcoming flu season. The American Academy of Pediatrics is recommending all children six months and older get a flu shot. We want to try to get the flu vaccine for children as early as possible in the season. So ideally, you would like for your child to be vaccinated before the end of October. Last year's flu season was one of the worst on record. 179 children died and thousands more were hospitalized. 80% of kids who died were not vaccinated. That's why mom Jenny Carson says she's not taking any chances with her three-year-old Jacob. As a parent, you know, you want to protect your children as much as, you, as possible. This season, the AAP is recommending the flu shot for kids as the primary choice over the nasal spray. Experts say the shot has provided the most consistent protection against flu strains in recent years. So that's great. While no vaccine offers 100% protection, Dr. Madhavi Kapoor of NYU Langone Health says symptoms can be less severe for people who get the shot. You're far less likely to have complications from the flu and also be hospitalized as a result of the flu. So much better to have at least some protection than none at all. For parents like Jenny, that's comforting. She says she'll be back to Dr. Kapoor's office as soon as the flu shots come in. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Experts also recommend pregnant women get a flu shot because they can pass some protection on to their newborn. And CBS 4 News at 7 continues in just a minute, but don't forget if you see news or weather happening, take a picture, send it to us. Our email is cbs4picks at cbs.com.